understand at this time, invite Brother Ashley to come. Turn with me to 169. sing that lovely hymn, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, Brethren. Look full in His wonderful face. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full the things of the earth oh, will grow strange in the light of his glory and grace. Amen. Come on now, oh, turn for I of the earth, hallelujah, strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. One more time, amen. Oh, turn your eyes upon And look oh, in his wonderful face and the things of the earth will grow strange Eden <coughs> of his glory. Our Heavenly Father, we have hearts full of gratefulness this morning that we have this great opportunity of gathering around your word. We commit this service into thy hands and we pray thy will be done. And we'll give you all the glory and the honor and the praise for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen, and you may be seated. God bless you all this morning. and It's so good to be back around the Word of God for this little time of fellowship. Amen. Knowing that these messages that go forth in this hall aren't just limited to these four walls but they go all over the world and being closed for the last two weeks we have had a few people inquire as to what has happened and uh, we realize that many people have a look at these messages that we don't know. We've never met and we've never come in contact with. So we gather here and we accumulate and collate all these quotes and we put them together and share them with the people around the globe and our heart's desire and our prayer is that God would bless them as they have access to the things that we are dwelling on. Now we've had a great time on the communion study. I believe it's been about 45 messages we've, we've gone through on the communion. And I believe that we are fully established now 
And we know beyond any shadow of a doubt that the ordinance is no longer valid due to the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ has come the second time. And now this morning we start a new series. Uh, I'm up to number five on, on studying now and we've got five messages awaiting us. And we entitled this Mystery Invisible Union. And I this morning want to dedicate these messages to one lady, the bride of Jesus Christ. In the invisible union of the bride, Brother Branham called this woman the elected lady. One woman among many. She is an elected woman. Like Mary was elected to bring forth the Christ. So is the bride of Jesus Christ elected in this hour to do certain things. We have a, a great picture before us this morning. And there is a laminated copy that is available for those that uh, want to maybe hang them up in their home or keep them on their desk or whatever they want to do with it. It is the picture of Hoffman's head of Christ. And in the background is that elected lady, the word bride in this hour. And we know what Brother Branham said about that picture of Hoffman's head of Christ. He said, my house has never been without one of those pictures since that event took place in 1963. Malachi 4.5 we believe to be William Marion Branham. We believe that he was the Elijah of Malachi 4, 5. And he made these amazing statements. I've introduced you to him. I must decrease now. I must go off the scene. He will take over from here. The millennium will be on right away. See, the time is at hand. Now we know that the millennium never happened in the days of John the Baptist. John never said what the Elijah of the end times said. It wasn't allotted to him, but it was allotted to Malachi 4 to make that great statement, the millennium will be on right away. The ushering in of the millennium. Let us stand as we read this great portion of scripture this morning from St. John 4, 9 to 26. And throughout these messages and throughout this series of messages, let us always remember the invisible union that exists between the bride of Christ and Christ. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, 
How is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And Jesus said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me a drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Then the woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? You believe in invisible water? (laughs) Art thou greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Then the woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water, that I thirst not, neither cometh hither to draw. And Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husbands, and come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husbands. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husbands. For thou hast five husbands, and He whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, The hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. For who, for we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Then saith the woman unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called the Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all these things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. May God bless his word. You may be seated. <coughs> right. The invisible union of the bride. Let's start this study by looking at these statements. God used an Abraham. He lied. He used a Moses. He rebelled. A Jonah, he disobeyed. A Samson, he sinned. A David, he murdered. He also used Joshua and a Joseph. And those with, watch this now, severe blemishes far outnumber those whose history seemed to be perfect. All were and are his. None dare deny that. He used them by and through the Holy Spirit that he put within them. To their own master they stood or fell. And in them all was accomplished the sovereign will of God. Let external history attempt to refute this. It still stands. All 
these men we've just read about had an invisible union with God. Men with severe blemishes, major faults, extreme faults, God used them. Amen? And God accomplished in these men his sovereign will. Pages of history are full of men that failed, had severe blemishes, didn't look the part, but God used them. Number one, and when God comes again, when Jesus comes again, you'll be surprised. That little washwoman back in the alley, you'll be surprised. That guy that don't say nothing, keeping his secrets to himself and walking around before God humble, you'll be surprised. It'll sure. He said, I preached not long ago that the judgments, the surprises at the judgment, it won't be surprised to see the bootlegger there. He knows he's going. Sure. Look at number two. You won't be surprised to see the liar, the adulterer, and everything there. That ain't. But the surprises will be. Look now, look. And the disappointment will be those who think they were going. Yeah, and then be turned down. Those who said, well, wait a minute. My mother belonged to this church. My father belonged to this church. My grandfather and grandmother, I have been a member there all my life. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I didn't even know you. See, their thoughts had never been changed. They'd never been able to change their doctrine. They were just anchored into a church somewhere. When Jesus comes again, you'll be surprised. Now number three, look, we've been through all that and showed. See, over the years in this hall, we've studied on this. How they missed John. How they missed Elijah. How they missed Jesus. How they missed them all the way along. And they'll do the same thing. Because the Bible said they would. See? When that bride steps on the scene with true bride doctrine, it'll go right over their heads. They'll miss it. They'll miss the manifestation of the bride. The bride is destined to be missed unnoticed. He said something will pass right through the church and you'll never know it. Number four, so then, in that time it'll be very humble. It'll be so simple. That's what will make people fall away from it. It's too simple for them. We find out always when people get smart and educated and know a whole lot, then that, that just, that's just the kind that misses it, you know. See? God still has a voice for the people of the earth. And that voice will be in the bride, the elected lady. And it will pass right through the people. Number five, Jesus never took them kind of people to be his disciples. He took unlearned people, fishermen. And nobody's connected with their churches and things. He just got ordinary men 
Amen. Tax collectors and farmers and fishers and so forth to do his work, see? Because they, they know they're nothing. Then he can make something out of them, see? When a man stands up and says, I'll tell you what the prophet meant, he's no good to God. <laughs> but when a man can't explain a quote and just quotes a quote, that's God's man, amen. Amen. Just say what the tape says. Number six, that most men who ever do anything great for the kingdom of God stand alone. Did you ever think of it? You have to stand by yourself. Amen. Jesus stood alone. And all down through the ages, other men stood alone. Finney, Shanky, and Calvin, Knox, even Abraham Lincoln, that's right, stood alone. Men who do great things, men of vision, men of spiritual understanding, stand Alone. <laughs> They're not hooked to nothing. They got no connection with the majority. Amen. They're not in contact with the hierarchy. Amen. They have no liaison with the religious groups. They stand alone, isolated, lonely, off to one side. They cut off from their own family sometimes. They've lost their friends. They've been made redundant. They oddballs. Remember, he preached it. They nuts. They weirdos. They are abnormal mortals. Amen stand alone and in them God performs his sovereign will look at number 7 any man that's spiritual is considered crazy we know that anyone but all they have an invisible union amen with almighty Number eight, remember spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Amen. See, now look. Number nine. Watch this. This famous song that they just sung, Oh, love of God, how rich, how pure. You know where the last verse of that was found? Tacked on a wall of an insane institution. Did you know that? That's right. It was tacked on an insane institution in the walls. People don't realize what it means. Truth comes in strange places. God is identified in the abnormal. Amen. Number 10. Could you imagine this building here being energized tonight for light by the electricity? Electricity is an unseen force. When it's harnessed and brought on, when Benjamin Franklin first found it, he screamed, I've got it! He didn't know what he had. He had something. Mm. See the old light bulb? You can see the light, but you can't see what's driving the light. Amen. Number 11. 
like that light. It isn't the lamp that makes the light, it's the electricity that's in the wire that makes the light. There's no one in the world that knows what electricity is. Isn't that strange? No one knows what it is. They can harness it, they can make it light, they can cook with it, they can heat with it, they can light with it, but no one knows what it is. Oh, that invisible union of the bride. Amen. Amen. Inspiration is invisible. Amen. Number 12. What is faith? It's an unseen force. (laughs) Brother, the rapture is a revelation. You can't see it. Amen. Number 13. Man... In his natural state, he cannot, he cannot understand spiritual things. They are spiritually discerned. Oh, that's rich. Number 14. And God in the beginning made his first man. He made him out of spirit. And the spirit is, look, 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 look. The invisible part of man that you don't see. Amen? I can't see Brother Steve Copley. I can see the body he lives in. (laughs) Amen? I can't see Brother Paul. Because inside is the real brother Paul. The invisible union of the bride. Amen. Number 15. But with Job being in the spirit, he caught the vision of the coming one. Or coming just one. Man in his natural state, he cannot understand spiritual things. Number 16. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Revelations 10, 1 to 10. So he, in the spirit, if you want to put that down, Revelations 1, 10 and 13. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard. Here comes the invisible part now. Behind me as a voice of a trumpet sounding like many waters. See? You can't hear spiritual things with your natural ear. Amen? Oh my. Number 17, Paul, look. With the Holy Ghost. Amen? He caught that in the Spirit. It was the invisible part of Paul that caught the word of God. Amen. Amen. Not the natural man. No, 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 no. He cannot understand spiritual things. Amen. Ooh, we're going to get deep in this. See, it's the invisible part. See, that's the dimension we want to move in. All right, watch, number 18. Did you notice? Watch now. Paul never knew Jesus physically. Amen. Paul never knew him. The only way that Paul knew him was by revelation, by vision. Is that right? Amen. It was the inner man, the spirit man, that caught the word. And the revelation. Oh my, now look where we're going. See, these are deep quotes, brother, sister. See? Number 19. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. There was something said. It just wasn't a noise. Something 
listen, listen, was saved. Amen? And brother, it's going to take that inner man, that unseen part of man, to understand what the thunder said. It can only be known by revelation. Now remember that something was said when the seven thunders uttered, uttered their voices. Amen. A statement was made. A declaration. There was an utterance. There was an affirmation. It wasn't just a bang and a thump and an explosion. Something was said. Got it? Look at number 20 there. But the Bible said and told Daniel and also John that in the last days these seven voices get it? Would be known by the real true church. You get it? When those thunders uttered something was said. (laughs) Voices. Now look at number 21. And seven thunders uttered their voices. And John was even forbidden to write it, see? The coming of the Lord. What did the seven thunders utter? The coming of the Lord. Number 22. They never get in his spirit. Or it would happen to them exactly as the word says. Pray to God for a revelation by his spirit. That's the first step. Get in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Then you'll hear what the thunders uttered. Amen. The coming of the Lord. Oh. Alright, now number 23. Look. Just as sure as God raised that body in the literal out from the grave, the spiritual body will go in the rapture truly. That's the invisible part of a mortal. That's what goes in the rapture truly. Amen. But brother Ashley, what about the flesh? (laughs) I'm waiting for the flesh to be changed. No, brother. If you believe the message, you've got to believe number 24. Flesh goes to its punishment. Get it separated. Amen. 1 Peter 1.24 For all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away. It's the spiritual body that goes in the rapture. The flesh goes to its My, 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 my. Flesh, flesh, flesh. What's going to happen to the flesh? Number 25. And these old bodies that we now live in, or even like we have now that's getting old, it's getting old, brother, (laughs) and draping up and dropping down, will be dropped over yonder into the cupola of dust and molded over and made unto his glorious body in the final resurrection when... He comes again. There's three comings, you know. (laughs) The first coming is past. The second coming is the rapture when we meet him. And the third coming is when he's coming to rule and reign a thousand years. Amen. He does not come to earth on his second coming. We meet him in the air. It's the spiritual body 
that takes the rapture. Oh. See, you see, you see, you see, now Brother Steve said to me this week, you know, we need to we need to get some of these statements alive so when people get the message they can actually hear the inspiration on it. See, Brother Bram said, I could write, I could write my messages. But we come together on a Sunday to gather around the word and catch the inspiration on it. Amen. It's the spiritual body that goes in the rapture. The flesh goes to its punishment. Amen. Oh my. Number 26. Look, 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 look. We've got a good series here, brother. There's some quotes that are going to astound you. And I'm so thankful that I have the freedom to say what I want to say behind the pulpit. I can read what I want to read. Look, number 26. You are on the inside of that body. Amen. You, the Spirit of God, is on the inside of that body. That's what makes the outside come into subjections. Because the inside is pulling it, see, bringing it into line with the Word of God. Your inside, you, yourself, your being, where are you? In the inside of that flesh, amen. This body is just an old coat, and someday what will you do with it? For you was only in the garment for a while. That is like the earthly garment, this body, your, your real you, your real self is on the inside of this coat that you call William Branham, Susie Jones, or whatever it is. See? See? The real you on the inside. And what does it do to this flesh? It pulls it, tugs it into subjection. Amen. You've been down to a shopping center. Sometimes you see a a naughty little kid... (laughs) He wants to go that way and mom wants to go that way. And he'll stamp his feet and he'll do everything. He wants to get over there where the toys are. And the mother wants to go and buy the food. And she tugs and she pulls. Amen. And that's what happens with the spiritual man on the inside. It pulls this flesh. It tugs this flesh into subjection to the word of God. But the real you is not this outside flesh. You're on the inside. Amen. And it's the spiritual body that goes in the rapture. Oh, glory. Amen. All right. Now, and the spirit is the invisible part of man that you don't see. Amen. Number 27. Look, and if you've got the Holy Spirit in you, then you're a candidate for association with the unseen world and the supernatural. You've got to get into that sphere, brother. You've got to get into that dimension. You've got to get into that realm. Amen. Then you're a candidate for the supernatural. Look at number 28. But when the Holy Spirit comes into the heart... Quickly he becomes a two-fold being. Amen. One of earth to die. Oh, I'm not going to die. <laughs> oh, brother, the message, the prophet, thus saith the Lord. The Bible says you will die. Amen. The flesh will go to its punishment. See? And the spiritual body will go in the rapture. In this body, he's still subject to death. But in his soul, hallelujah, he's passed from death unto life. Oh my. Number 29. In this, in his body, he has his earthly contact with five senses. In his spirit, he has contact with God through the Holy Ghost. And the angels of God visit them and speak with them. And they are messengers sent from God to reveal and to bring messages from God to the individual. Amen. Oh, you can pick it up 
in the invisible union, amen, of the bride. All right, number 30. So people are not all made. You're not all born in that way to break into that supernatural. But God has set some on earth to represent him as ambassadors for him. And that ambassador is ordained of God to go into that great unknown supernatural and discern and bring out things that the natural mind can not perceive it. The natural mind hasn't got the capability to understand the things of God. Amen. Number 31, the carnal mind don't get it. The spiritual mind, hallelujah, picks it up. Oh, can you see the difference? Amen. Why? Look, I'd like to ask you something. Why didn't the Egyptians see these things? Because they was not elected. Amen. See, remember Paul never knew Jesus physically. All right, number 32. He is the one that opened those seals. He is those seals. For the whole word of God is Christ, and Christ is the seals that was opened. What is the opening of the seals then? Revealing Christ. See? The physical part of man can't comprehend it. See? The seventh seal is not known to the public. They can't discern it, for it can only be discerned by the Holy Ghost. Number 33, oh, notice, the Holy Ghost is the only revealer of the divine revelation of Christ. There's no school that can do it, no scholar can do it, no man, how well educated, how godly or anything else, there's no man that can do it. Notice. And he will only do it to the predestinated. That's exactly. Oh my. Number 34. It's the same thing. Election and predestination's the same thing. Look at number 35. Look, look, look. Here it comes now. See? She has been given and revealed to her the seven sealed mystery of the Bible. No physical activity. See, it's not in a physical realm. It's the spiritual body that picks it up. Seven voices would be known to the real, true church. I want you to read carefully with me. Huh? Number 36. The rapture is a revelation to her. It's revealed to her. See, oh, I... I would like to nail it and clench it and clench it and nail it and clench it and super glue it. Amen. The rapture is a revelation. Amen. Amen. See, I was talking to, I was talking to, to Brother Paul just before the meeting. And I said, I come across a quote and I can't find it, but I remember it. And I used it one time behind the pulpit here. It's where Brother Branham said a, a hound dog, he said, that's how you get your messages. See? See, yeah. All of a sudden you catch the scent. And then you start following along or following along. And it begins to unfold, 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 unfold. You've seen the, the dog squad and you've seen all these dogs at the airport. See? All of a sudden you, you're walking along and you see this beagle dog. He's in and out and in and out and all over the place looking at this case and that case. Brother, we've got the briefcase of the prophet. Amen. And we have an invisible ability to pull out the things that we ought to know. All right, number 37. You're reading with me now. But young Joshua and Caleb said, <laughs> Did you catch the sniff there? <laughs> huh? This is deep, brother. This is deep, sister. But old Joshua and Caleb said, 
we can do it. Why? God said so. Look now, look. These other weaklings were looking through the physical side. <laughs> Amen. But old Joshua and Caleb. <coughs> hey. These weren't spiritual teenagers. <laughs> Amen. They weren't middle-aged men. In Australia, the term is they were old codgers. <laughs> right? I believe their beard was white. They had passed through a generation. They lived in Moses' time. They knew the saying, one day older, one day wiser. Old Joshua and Caleb. Well on in years. Look, brother, they were at the end of a generation there. They could look back. They could see what had taken place. They knew about old Balaam, <laughs> Dr. Balaam. Yeah? How he looked just as fundamental as Moses looked. He did everything Moses did. But Moses had the pillar of fire. Amen. Moses had the cloud. Moses had the supernatural. They drank from the rock. I can see old Caleb saying to Joshua... You remember the time we ate that manna that fell from heaven? <laughs> They'd come a long way. They had a lot of history behind them. They were thoroughly acquainted with the teachings of Moses. <laughs> Amen. They were well stricken in age. And that's where we stand in now. This generation. Amen. We'll see Jesus Christ return. This day, this scripture is fulfilled. That was 1965, long time ago. They had seen old Dathan and Korah swallowed up in denominationalism. They had seen so many things. Old Joshua and Caleb. I went past that word and I caught the sniffle. Go, go back, go back, go back. Look at the elderly men we're talking about. They had matured. Amen. They had ripened. Glory be to God. Number 38, look. What a beautiful quote. They wasn't looking to the physical side of it. They were looking to what God had promised. Amen. They hadn't forgotten the promise. Amen. <laughs> they knew what was said in 1933 as John the Baptist forerun the first coming. So you forerun the second coming. Yes. Amen. They weren't looking at the physical side. They knew the promise of God was standing on the promises. Amen. When Jesus comes again, you'll be surprised. Amen. Oh yeah, 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 to 8. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed. Amen. From heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Old Joshua and Caleb, look where they were standing. See, oh my, I believe we're standing like Joshua and Caleb right now at the end of the road. Amen. And they knew they're going to make it. Why? Because God said so. Amen. Number 39. 
we worship an invisible God. Amen. He's here this morning. Amen. For he promised to be in the midst of his people where two or three are gathered together in my name. You say, Brother Ashley, you believe the Lord has come? Where is he? (laughs) Oh my. What a foolish question. The same people you could say, do you pray to God? Yes. Where is he? (laughs) Amen. Amen. We worship an invisible God. Number 40, but remember our God is still the God of Elijah. He's still the God he ever was. He's still the same God. He moves in the same cycle. He does the same thing. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still the same God that Joshua and Caleb knew. He never failed them, and he will never fail the elected lady. Amen. But this is the last age, the age of complete blackout and apostasy. This is the age of apostasy. Oh, my. Isn't it in a mess? Isn't it disintegrated into chaos? And this is the age of restoration. It is the age of the finished cycle. With this, it is all over. Amen. And if you part of that bride, there is an invisible union. Amen. And in the coming weeks, we want to comb through all these quotes. We want to have a good look at she is him. And I believe we'll find out that God moves in an invisible way. And he is moving in an invisible way with his invisible bride. Amen. Second or first Timothy one seventeen. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I ask you to join me next Sunday and the Sundays that lay ahead as we go into the invisible union of the bride. Amen. God bless you. Standing on the promises of Christ our King. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Good morning, brethren. Can we just stand? Let's turn to 230, and we'll sing that precious song, Standing on the Promises of Christ my King. Stand like Joshua. Amen. Amen. That's right. Um. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. promises of God. Amen. Standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fears are sailed. By the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Glory, standing, standing. Promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the 
promises I now can see. Perfect pleasant cleansing hey. in the blood for me. Standing in the liberty where Christ makes free. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, I'm standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord. Bound to Him eternally by love's strong call. Overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword. Standing on the promises of God. Oh, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. of God, standing on the promises I cannot fail, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, trusting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God, hey, oh everybody standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen for the message, Lord. Thank you. I'm still Chris now. I'm a small person. You'll take over from here. The millennium will be on. I'm at hand.